Ladies and men who like to be tied down by women, Andy here, author of the best Tinder guide on the internet. And I don't have anything else to add there. This is the Kill You're in a Loser show. Let's fucking go. Normally, I have a really great flashy intro for you, ladies and gentlemen. There's none today. Why am I wearing rope around my neck? To symbolize today's question. We got a question from a little gentleman here who says, actually, I don't know if he's little. He might be quite big from a gentleman here who says, I'm not sure if it counts since I haven't actually done it completely to the extent that I would want, but I think the idea of getting tied down and having a woman just completely use you to pleasure herself is so hot. Yes, it's hot as fuck. I think if most men explored that, I think it's They'd say it's hot as hell. A pretty hot idea generally. Yeah. I don't think it's like some super niche. Yeah, it's like fetish. a woman just going like ape shit on your body and just like tying you up and just doing filthy crazy shit to you and teasing you and making you beg mm-hmm. for a fucking orgasm and like, yeah, that's hot as hell. Why mm-hmm. would that not be hot? Mm-hmm. But I think, and this is kind of the guy's question and what we're going to get into with this podcast. I think a lot of guys put this or they're, they're concerned that like, but doesn't that mean that I'm a faggot if I let a woman dominate me? Doesn't that mean that I'm a beta male mm-hmm. and I'm she's going to leave me? And that's kind of this guy's question. So, yeah, let's jump straight into it. So, smothering her, choking me, and getting really into it, etc. I have had women choke me, and I've told them to pin me by the wrists, like I tend to do to them, and they go hard on me, which was absolutely amazing. So, yeah, he's already figured out, like, damn, that shit's hot. Mm. Like, when a woman goes crazy on you, it's very sexy. But I notice that I feel like I have to be extra masculine and dominant towards her next time we have sex after I do that. I'm guessing it's some kind of fear of her not being able... So her not being that into it and then getting turned off if we keep it up. So permanently turned off if we keep it up. It's obviously based on me not communicating clearly enough. So mm. yeah, he's he's self-aware enough to realize that this is coming from him and he doesn't have to be super dominant or masculine the next time. He's It sounds like he understands that he's putting that pressure on himself mm. to do that, yeah. By the way, if anyone is wondering why the fuck my hat is backwards, I actually don't know. Did, why did I do this? I did this for a reason. I put my hat on. But, oh, yeah, because then the light will get blocked. There you go. You can't see me because I've changed the lighting setup anyway. A little bit scatterbrained this morning. But the point that you're making with the... In response to this guy. I don't know what fucking point I'm making, Imogen. We've lost the fucking plot. And this is, is that- what happens when you do a 365-day project. You lose your fucking mind. Yeah, what's the point? Is that it's not... Wanting to have a woman be dominant towards you and take control in the bedroom is not something that needs to be made up for. At least from my perspective, yeah, where it correct. sounds like he's coming from, it's like, this is a negative thing. And now next time you need to make up for the fact that yeah, it's Yeah, I've done something bad or I've done something shameful or unmasculine and now I need to balance that energy or she'll think I have a little pee-pee. Yeah, or even maybe it's not even so dramatic as that as much as it is like she doesn't, she's not that into this. Like this is effort for her. Like she's yeah. doing me a favor. Yep. rather than this is something hot for both of us to share that we can both enjoy yep. and it's a fun experience for both right. of us. Which is why one of the notes I wrote down for myself to talk about this topic was right now this guy is having a, and I'm going to, this guy's going to watch this video. So mate, right now you're, and anyone else listening, right now you have a kind of a loser's mindset with this. What I mean by that, I'm not saying you're a loser, but I'm saying you're worried about losing. You're playing not to lose. You're going, oh my God, like I'm going to lose if I don't do something more masculine the next time. Fuck, like I've already kind of half lost and I have to fix it. I have to solve the half lost. Oh, golly gee, like I let her dominate me a little bit. Golly gee is my favorite. You've been saying that I've been saying golly gee. Hey, you got so embarrassed this morning when I was like, I'm going to say golly gee to this woman in the bakery. And then you're like, I'm going to walk away and I made you hold my hand and stand there. I was like, golly gee. But no, you said you were going to make make your whole order in this little like voice. Yeah, I said I was going to talk like that the whole voice. And then I pussied out like a coward, <laughs> like a fucking beta male, which is funnily enough what we're talking about here. Masculinity. Mm. Right, have the masculine energy to talk in a goofy voice when you order at a bakery. Okay, guys, come on. So back on topic. It's like he's he's got a, a losing mindset. He's trying not to lose here. He's going like, fuck, I've already half lost by letting her dominate or asking her, telling her that I want her to dominate me. Mm. I've already half lost. No, no, no. Switch that around. Have a winner's mindset about this. Focus on how you can win with her dominating you. Mm. Focus on a way that you can make it hot as fuck for her. Which it absolutely is. Yes. Like, so we, this is something that we explore. Like all the time. Together. I want to say like one in 20 times we have sex. 
I tell you I want you to be dominant. Yeah. Or you'll just occasionally do it, but usually I have to tell you. Yeah. And part of what I like so much about it is seeing how much you enjoy it yeah. and how turned on you get and the fact that... And that feels really good for me. Like, giving you pleasure and being able to give you that experience feels great for me. Because funnily enough, it's a way of pleasing. Yeah, absolutely. And part of what's fun about that, though, is that you completely own the fact that that feels good for you. I don't sit there and have shame. There's no shame. And afterwards, you'll tell me, like, yeah, that was really hot. But you don't say, like, Yeah, I'm not like, oh, my God, next time I have to dominate you so that you don't think less of me. Yeah. Yeah, there's no... I'm so sorry that I made you do that. Yeah, I don't get any sense of insecurity or, or shame guilt or, or yeah. yeah anything like that when you and that's what part of it is so enjoyable for me, mm. and I happily do that because that's the case. But I can mm. see, at least in this guy's case, and obviously we don't know how much he's doing this, but if he was, I would guess that if he's got all of these feelings around being more submissive or letting a woman dominate him, that that's going to be coming out in some way. Of course, and obviously then she's going to feel a bit weird about that, and she's probably turning that in on herself and thinking like did I do something wrong was that too much was I too slutty or too sexual and I can see that being a turn off for her even if it's a subconscious thing of like something feels a bit weird yeah whereas I think if you completely own the fact that you enjoy this this is something you want to do and you encourage it in a place that comes from like confidence or like Mm -hmm. self-assurance or just owning Admitting that you like this part of it. This is a fun thing you like to do. That's it. That's the whole fucking story. Yeah. Mm. I like this kind of sex. Do you like it? Yes or no? Cool. Yeah. Without all the other stories wrapped around it of like, oh, this is shameful. I'm bad. I'm not masculine enough. This is bad. This is something I have to make up for. I have to be more dominant next time. You might find you actually just fucking enjoy it. You might find that she does. A lot of women love this stuff. Basically, every woman that we sleep with right now, we... Well, every woman that we sl- every woman that we've slept with in the last couple of years, right? We've, if they want to, and most of them do, mm. we've gently encouraged them to bring out that more dominant side of themselves. Ge- some of them you have to do it like, you have to really hold their hand and do it. Yeah, because for me, it happened you were like very, that. very gently. I had to train you how to be dominant over like years. Yeah, it took a long time to train you to be able to do it because you were embarrassed. What if I'm not good at this? What if Mm. I screw it up? I don't know how to be dominant. I'm not confident. And so you kind of like hold hands. And I've done podcasts on how to meet dominant women and also how to encourage even the most submissive women to be dominant if they they want to, which you're going to find almost every single woman does. I think every woman, I think every person wants to explore that sort of dominant side of themselves if they're introduced to it slowly and there's no Mm. expectations. Mm. It's not like, hey, you have to dominate me right now. And they're like, I don't know how to do that. I don't know what to do. Like, I'm a deer caught in the headlines. So, yeah, I would have more of a winner's mindset. I would start switching it up. And part of the way that you can do that is I would read a book called I Need Your Love. Is That True? I've talked about this book all the time. I will leave a link in the description to it. But a big part of the book is basically not trying to get something from other people and instead just in expressing with integrity the things that you want. It's honesty. It's it's all the stuff that I encourage in this YouTube channel and on my blog and in all my content and so if you just come so read this book basically but if you just come to this saying hey this is a part of myself i really want to explore hey i really want to see what you're like being a bit more dominant i'm going to teach you i'll encourage you it's really fucking hot nothing drives me crazier than when a woman is a little bit more dominant with me it's fucking hot Mm -hmm. like she's gonna go wow that's really hot i'd love to And with some of the stuff that he's saying he wants, it's the most like basic stuff ever. It's like, you know, he says, I've had women choke me just the other day, like three days ago, I grabbed your hand, I put it on my throat Mm. and you choked me. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, that's so fucking hot. Like, you don't have to, this doesn't have to be a big thing. Just grab her hand, put it on your throat, like choke her first. Mm. And again, if you've never choked before, if the whole disclaimer don't choke a woman if you've never choked before and you don't know what you're doing ask for consent in bdsm be gentle all of that shit blah 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 blah, blah. but choke her first mm. she's obviously into it she's moaning oh my god that's so hot and then grab her hand even while you're doing it and put it on your throat and she can learn to do that mm. and then there you go now you've taught her like hey the thing that i like to do on you that you moan when i do it she does that on you and then you fucking start moaning and if you were able to And I will give you some strategies in a second. But if you can get over this shame and this guilt and this fear, it's really fear. Probably a lot of shame too. Fear like she won't like me. She'll think I'm not masculine. What if my friends find out? Like what if, what if, what if some guy on the internet says I'm a cuck? Like what if all this kind of crap, right? Mm. If you can pull yourself up out of shame or guilt or fear or any of that up into something even just more neutral. Like, oh yeah, I like to be choked. It's fine. It's hot. 
let alone if you can pull yourself up into joy or something or, or love or like, man, I fucking love this. It's so good. Oh my God, it's so good. Like if you could pull yourself up into those emotional states, you're then expressing that to her. And she's going to be way more likely to enjoy this stuff and think of you as masculine if you're not full of shame. Mm -hmm. Is shame masculine? No, it's also not feminine. But like, is it masculine? Fucking no. Is being ashamed of who you are masculine? Fuck off. It's the opposite of masculine. So the best thing you could do if you're so worried about being extra masculine and dominant is dominate, like own that part of yourself. Take full fucking ownership of it and say, I really like this part of myself. Yep. I want you to explore this with me. And she'll go, oh, that's sexy. Or she'll say, I'm not into that. And you can say, okay, cool. We'll just have normal sex then. And I'll go and find someone who wants this if that's something you want to explore. I think guys get caught up. Women do the same thing mm. too, don't they? But with the masculinity one, obviously women get caught up in trying to be feminine. Yeah, and I think just as a whole, like sex is something that people feel a lot of shame around. Oh, and yeah. anything that's not vanilla boring bullshit yeah so it's not that there's and anything like, wrong with that but not that there's anything wrong with that at all but anything that's not like super mainstream like super yeah. like we've accepted this this is cool this is fine anything even slightly outside of that there's all this like oh like there's something wrong with me like i'm sh ashamed of this this is yep. dirty and wrong and people are gonna think i'm weird but i think part of like one of the joys of sex is that it can be so exploratory mm -hmm. and experimental and you have the opportunity to be so vulnerable with yep. your partner and play with the dynamics of being dominant being submissive and just yep. kind of letting go and letting those parts of you come out like mm -hmm. that's kind of the joy yeah. of sex it's it's an exploration of yourself more than the other person it's intimacy mm -hmm. with yourself it's going inside yourself and exploring your own psychology obviously your own sexuality your own body pleasure dopamine like intimacy mm -hmm. oxytocin like all, all of that shit i'm just saying random big words now but it's it's a big exploration it's intimacy with yourself more than anything if you're right now feeling ashamed of yourself and ashamed of your desires and ashamed of some pretty fucking basic stuff mm -hmm. man like is this is some pretty basic shit i did a video really recently which maybe this guy hasn't watched called uh sexual shame and religious guilt so check on my youtube channel for that go and watch that i talked about this concept and i was talking about some more some stuff that people are usually even more ashamed of like cucking like being cucked mm. like a guy who's turned on by cucking mm. pegging mm. like a bunch of stuff like that but the stuff that you're putting here is like pretty mainstream and by the way even if you're into cucking and, and pegging cool embrace that part of yourself if mm. if and i said this in the video if it increases your self-esteem I wouldn't recommend you do something that makes you feel worse about yourself. Don't do that. Yeah, because I think a lot of that sort of stuff, like being submissive, I think a lot of it comes from, for some people, it can come from a place of, I don't like myself. I want yeah, someone so let to me like, get myself hurt more. Yeah. Do, yeah, I would like someone to degrade me and humiliate me. Yeah, I would never recommend anyone do that ever. Like, that's mm -hmm. one of my hard lines in the sand. And you can do whatever you want. And like, but yeah, that's... I would never anyone recommend anyone do anything that's degrading to themselves. You can degrade in the moment, and we do plenty of that. Like mm. You can use words like whore, bitch, cunt, slut, like, you know, those kind of words, consensually, obviously. But afterwards, you want to feel good about having done that. Like, oh, that was a fun little role play. Mm. You don't want to feel worse about it. Like, you know, I really didn't feel good about being called a whore in the middle of sex. That feels fucking wrong to me. It's like, okay, mm. bring that up. Talk about that. Don't do that again. Or mm. find a way you can do it in a healthy way. So the yeah on the top i want to sort of stay on the topic of masculinity for a second i've said this a million times a big part of masculinity is being proud of yourself embracing yourself and if you can pull yourself out of the shame and up there into you know neutrality or acceptance or willingness or like excitement or joy or love or like peace or like man yeah i'm just a guy that likes to switch it up sometimes like mm. uh, i switch it up all the fucking time like i love all that shit mm. it feels really good yeah, we have very, like, exploratory... Oh, my God, yeah. ...experimental yeah. sex. That's with what, girls as well, yeah. Part of what makes it so much fun is, like, e like even with one of the girls that we're seeing at the moment, we will talk about, like, all of the different things we can try, and we never finish half of the things that we say we're going to do, because there's Because there's, so like, much, an infinite number of things, yeah. Yeah, so many different things to try, and it's so much fun... Yeah. ...exploring all those... I've, I've said explore, like, a million times now. Exploring all of those different sides of yourself and yeah, each for other. Sure. For sure. And nothing bad happens other than the story you tell yourself and the things you're scared of. And do you want to be the kind of man who acts on fear? Do you want to be the kind of man who just goes, oh, I'm scared that she's going to run away from me. So therefore, I shouldn't do this part of myself that I, I want to explore. No, you want to be the kind of man that runs towards fears. 
that embraces the things he wants. Again, make sure it increases your self-esteem. That should be without saying, but mm -hmm. so don't be dominated if it makes you feel worse about yourself. Be dominated if it feels really good. And part of that might mean that you have to work through some of this shame and this guilt and all that kind of stuff and get to a point where you can just enjoy it. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend you do something that hurts you. But the stuff that you're saying here is pretty normal. It's like, I want to be choked. Yeah, grab her hand and put it on your throat while you're choking her. Mm. A lot of this stuff too, if you just do it in a more masculine way, right now you're coming with shame and guilt and fear. That's not masculine as we've said. And it's fine to be full of shame and guilt and fear. I'm not telling you to stop feeling that way. But when you present someone with something saying hey i would like to i would like you to be more dominant but i'm really sh ashamed of it like or i feel guilty or i'm almost apologetic or i have to make up for it afterwards even if in the moment you think you're being masculine about it or that you're not bringing shame you think like no 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 like i'm able to do it it's just that afterwards i think that i should be more dominant no mm. you are subconsciously presenting that like i'm slightly ashamed of this thing or i'm, I'm not fully embracing i certainly mm. can't just fully get into it i'm not fully present because i'm kind of worrying about whether or not you think that i might be alpha or masculine or a beta male or any of that kind of stuff so if you can fully embrace this part of yourself which you can and we'll give you a couple of strategies in a second mm. some action that you can take but you're going to actually enjoy it more. She's going to enjoy it more. It's going to be more masculine. And you'll realize that a lot of the stuff you want here is very simple. It's very easy to get. It's like, I want you to choke me. Just grab her hand and put it on your throat. Done. Now she's choking you. You want her to pin your wrist. What you do is you get on top of her, pin her wrist above her head, fuck the shit out of her. Say, how does that feel? Does it feel good when I pin you down like this? And she'll go, oh my God, it's so hot. And you can go, yeah, it's fucking hot, isn't it? It's the hottest thing ever, isn't it? And she'll go, oh my God, it's incredible. And then you jump off her, you lie on your back and you get on top. And she'll jump on top and you'll grab her one of her hands put it on one of your wrists and you have your wrist above your head mm -hmm. you grab her hand put it on there and by that point she should understand what's going on but if she doesn't grab her you know say hey give me your other hand put your hand there pin her and go do exactly what i just did to you show me how fucking hot it is i want you to make me feel the way i just made you feel and she'll go oh my god Le that was incredible i can still remember it because it's two seconds ago in my brain and i know how fucking hot that was i want to give that to you what you're doing here is you're presenting with some guilt and this shame and like oh i'm asking something from her which is too much like you know like you said before i'm, I'm asking her to do me a favor it's like she's not doing you a fucking favor you're doing if, if you're thinking like that you do it first and then say hey now it's your turn do it for me please and afterwards it's probably even worth asking her like was that fun like did you enjoy it the whole time yeah yes. the, the <laughs> whole time and this is what i mean where and i've done podcasts on this so but how you train or teach or give permission for a submissive woman to be more dominant the way that i just said you dominate her and then you say i want you to do that to me. like and you can grab her hands and make her do it and show her and say no squeeze harder like choke me harder like yeah fucking make me you can be really dominant mm -hmm. and this is often what i'm like with you when you're being dominant it's because i'm being really dominant mm -hmm. i'm saying like yeah fuck me fuck me pin my like i'm telling yeah. you what to do i'm being very dominant mm -hmm. and telling you exactly what to do and then you're doing it to me. And in those moments, you feel somewhat submissive, right? In a weird way, you might be dominating, but you're following orders. You're doing what I want. Mm. You're mm. pleasing me. Mm. You're being submissive to me. And so you can do it in a dominant way. Yeah. And I think even if you just get the feedback from your girl and you like, you basically not make her tell you, but you encourage her to tell you that she's enjoying it. Yeah, so how does that feel? Is that hot? Do you feel powerful? Look how fucking sexy you are pinning me down. That feels good, doesn't it? You like being in control, don't you? Like yeah. talking really fucking dominant and dirty. Yeah, you get the opportunity to almost show yourself that it is something that you're both going to enjoy and it's yeah. of mutual benefit and it's something that you can share together. It's not something that one person is giving the other. And it sounds like this guy is like pretty self-aware and all of that. Like he's aware that it's coming from like an internal place and that he's, he knows. Yeah, he's yeah, feeling yeah, yeah. all of yeah, this sort yes, of stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think he just doesn't have a template for this. He hasn't realized he's down in shame and guilt. Here, I'll mm. show you the thing on screen. I, I love bringing this up. I talk about this in quite a few videos recently. He doesn't realize the, the way that the emotions hierarchies work. Okay, so, so here's your emotions. Here's your hierarchy. And this comes from uh, Letting Go by David Hawkins. So David Hawkins. All right. So when you're down here in guilt and shame, and I guess fear, but you're mostly down in guilt and shame. Mm. 
right? When we're talking about some of these sexual urges, you're just, obviously it doesn't feel as good. The lower you are on this hierarchy, I think it's pretty self-evident, right? If you're down here in guilt and shame, would you guys rather feel guilt and shame or would you rather feel enlightenment and peace and love and joy? It's like, gee, that's a fucking easy question, isn't it? So mm -hmm. it obviously feels a lot better to be higher up on this hierarchy, but you also get the things that you're looking for the higher up you are. If you're, again, if I role play, if I come to you and I say, oh, hey, like, I know this is kind of messed up and I know it's like kind of, it's really embarrassing to admit, but like, I, I kind of want you to like tie my wrists up. I know it's like disgusting, but I kind of want you to tie me up. Yeah, not sexy. That's like, not, I'd, how's that fucking hot? You might do it because you I'd feel sorry for, you, for me. And I'd probably yeah. do it from a loving place, but it certainly wouldn't be like passionate. It's not going to be hot for you. You're not going to be like, energy. oh, gee whiz, I'm so excited. But if I come to you and I say like, hey, like there's this part of me that's really exciting. Like, you know how turned on you get when I pin you down? I want to experience that. Mm. That looks so goddamn hot when you're when I do it to you. It looks incredible. I want to feel like that. And I understand if you don't know what to do, I'll teach you. But like, we have to do this thing. I need this. I want this. This is so hot. And when you talk about that sort of stuff to me, you almost do it in a way that is trying to turn me on when you talk about it. And like I'm it, presenting it ex in an exciting way. You yeah, want absolutely. To do it. it sounds cool. It sounds mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. And this is the way I present everything. And this is the way I'd encourage you guys to present stuff. If I'm hanging out with my friends, I'm not like, oh, like, you know, I just feel really lonely lately. Like, you know, would you come to dinner with, would you come to lunch with me and just put up with me? And I know I'm a fucking piece of shit loser who, do, you know, doesn't deserve to have anyone around him whatsoever. But like, yeah. would you tolerate my company for 30 minutes? They're going to be like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I don't want, no, that sounds pathetic. Like, why would I do that? But if I'm like, bro, dude, dude, I'm so grateful you're in my life, man. Like you mean so fucking much to me, brother. You have like changed my life in a million different ways. Dude, 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 let's like meet up for lunch, bro. I wanna like, what value can I give you in your life? Dude, like, is there anything you wanna talk about? Like, bro, I just wanna hear how your life is going, man. Like mm. we haven't caught up in a long time, dude. Like I, I fucking love you, brother. Like I wanna hear what's going on. If I say that, they're like, dude, sweet. This, this Saturday, let's meet up. What are you doing? Let's go. Like they're excited for that. So yeah. bring yourself up as best you can. Let's bring this back in. Bring yourself up to those higher emotional states because you're more likely to get the thing that you want. And this isn't about like manipulating or convincing someone to give you what you want, but like you're asking people for something, you're saying you want something, do it from an excited place. Mm -hmm. And so part of the way, we'll give some strategies, part of the way that you can embrace this side of yourself is reading the book, I Need Your Love, Is That True? by Byron Ketty. I would recommend that to start with, absolutely. It's about asking for what you want. It's about not trying to manipulate other people into getting what you want, which you might not realize, but you are manipulating. You're being very fucking manipulative here. Now, you're doing the best you can. I am not calling you a manipulative person, but the way you're going about this is manipulative. You're trying to get something from her. Now you might say, what am I trying to get? Like you're trying to get her to think that you're an alpha male. You're trying to get her to think you're masculine. You're trying to get her to not leave you. You're trying to get her to respect you. You're trying to get her to act the way you want her to act. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get her to think highly of you. You're literally trying to get in her fucking brain and control the way she thinks about you. That's manipulative as fuck. And so what I want you to do, read this book, what I would like him to do. And all this is coming from he's worried that she will lose respect for him and leave him. You know, he's kind of said that. I'm worried she'll be turned off by me. So you're trying to control how she feels about you. That's her fucking business, brother. If she gets turned off by you, let her feel that. You're basically raping her fucking mind. Like you're going like, oh, let me control whether or not you're into me or not. Let me manipulate. And I'm not saying you're a manipulative person. I do this sometimes. I still fucking do this all the time, don't I? I'm trying we, to... Yeah, we all accidentally... Yeah, you are not doing it as an intentional thing. But when we feel ourselves needing something from someone else, how do we go about that? We start to try and control them. We try and control the narrative in their head or we control the way they, they view us. Someone left a comment on my YouTube channel the other day, long comment. And, you know, we had like kind of a back and forth and it was a really great conversation. Mm -hmm. But the, the final thing that he said to me was, you know, I'm just trying to let you know how you come across to other people and just that other people will see what you've said in a certain way. Like in the way you phrased it, Andy, other people are just going to get the wrong impression of you. And I was like, brother, good. 
Like, I'm not here to fucking control how they react to, to me. Mm. That's raping their choice. Like, that's raping their fucking mind. I'm supposed to get in your mind and just control how you guys see me. You either like me or you fucking don't, or somewhere in the middle. Mm. You think I'm the world's greatest gift to humanity, which some of you email me with that. And then I will get an, the next email, like an hour later, saying, hey, you're the biggest piece of shit in the entire world, and you're a degenerate, and your girlfriend's a fucking bitch, and you're all cunts and this. And so it's like... If I'm going to get in there and try and control you guys, mm. then I'm who's here for me? Mm. I'm not acting with integrity. I'm not saying the things I want because I'm so worried about how you will take it. And so that's kind of a little bit what he's doing here. Mm. He's not meaning to. And mm. please don't take this as criticism. We all kind of do this. I do this, right? But you're trying to manipulate her. The only way you can do this is by manipulation. What does that look like? That looks like you holding back on the things you want. That looks like you going, okay, next time I have to be super dominant so I can manipulate her into thinking that, that I'm an alpha male. Stop trying to control how other people see you. They're either going to like you or they're not. This is abundance mentality. This is what we talk about when we say, funnily enough, masculinity mm. is not giving a shit what other people think about you. You try and be a kind person, but you do that for you. Mm -hmm. You, you present as a masculine person, but you do that because you like you. And so what I would suggest this guy does, obviously read the book. I need your love. Is that true? I would look in the mirror every night and or every day, look into your own eyes and say, I love you to yourself. This is something I do every single day, have done for a year. You're doing it as well. Mm -hmm. Heaps of my coaching clients. I make them do this. I would write a list of 50 things about yourself that are likable. I would write, okay, this is something I've done to one of my coaching clients who had some sort of shame and guilt and nervousness around going for casual sex mm. i said write a list of 20 things that are wrong with casual sex so it may i would suggest you do the same thing write a list of like 20 reasons why a woman dominating you is wrong or beta or you're a loser or you're a little cuck or like whatever whatever language comes up into your head write a list of those 20 things and then what you're going to see is every single one of those things is basically a loser's mindset mm. it's a fear it's an anxiety. It's like, oh my God, what if I lose? What if I lose? What if she leaves? What if this? What if that? Then what you do is you turn each one of those around or you find a way that you can turn them into a win. So one of the fears might be she will get permanently like put off by me if I keep being, mm. you know, submissive. So maybe the way you turn that into a win is you go, well, then I'll just be dominant sometimes and I'll do it for love. I'll do it because I fucking love being dominant, not because I'm worried that she'll she'll go away. Like mm -hmm. find a way to have a win instead of being obsessed about the loss. Yeah. Maybe another thing that you could do is go, I will just fucking talk to her. I'll be like, yo, hey, do you like when I'm, do you like being dominant? Does mm -hmm. it turn you on? Be Start talking dirty about it. Like send her text messages in between seeing her going like, you know, you're a filthy little mistress. I love when you get on top of me and just use me like you're so fucking dirty. And she'll go, oh, you like that? And you can be like, yeah, I like when you talk filthier to me. Come on, tell me tell me how much of a little fucking bad boy that I am, a dirty little boy for you. Like, you start encouraging the filthy talk, right? And get her into it. Get her horny over it. Yeah, the win can be like, how can I make sure that we have the best, like we yeah. each have the chance to have the best time possible when yeah. we do this. Yeah, how can I make sure she loves every second of it? Another thing you could do is get her to write a sexual bucket list of all the things she wants to try mm. and all the things you want to try and then integrate them into your sex life. And so it's like, okay, I'm every time you're dominant, I want you to so, so you say to her, every time you're dominant, I want you to also do a couple of the things from your sexual bucket list as well. Mm. So like maybe one of hers is like, I, I have always wanted to wear a butt plug. And so you say, okay, when you dominate me, I want you to have a butt plug in. Mm. So you're just like so fucking horny for me when you're like on top of me dominating me, like find ways to have wins with this shit mm -hmm. and then write a list after you've done that, after you've gone through your list of reasons why being submissive is not masculine mm. and you've kind of turned all of them around and found a way to win with every single one of them which by the way is the definition of masculinity and not that women can't win as well like that's not what i'm saying but like a masculine man wins so mm. find ways to win then i would finally write a list of maybe 20 reasons why being 20 reasons why having her be dominant is masculine as fuck and if you really struggle with that post another comment don't don't Right, like post a comment on this video, right? If you really struggle with it, post it. I can give you like a bunch right now. Her being dominant is masculine as fuck because you're going for what you want and you don't give a fuck what other people think. That's two things. That's masculine as hell. Mm. Her being dominant is masculine as hell because it turns you on like absolutely crazy and you just get so fucking horny and like mm. just ugh, like testosterone starts surging through your body. That's masculine as hell. 
it's it's masculine as hell because it fires you up so much that then afterwards because you fully embraced it instead of feeling guilty and ashamed about it afterwards you grab her and you just pull her into you and you're like fucking hell baby you're so fucking hot like in a masculine way you just grab her with all that like ferocious masculinity mm. and testosterone you just give her the biggest hug which is what i do after you dominate me don't it it's true just grab the shit i will have the hand on your my hand on the back of your neck and i would just like yank you down to me and i would just like roughly hug the shit out of you because i'm like God damn. I you get the most rough when I'm dominant. Yeah, I do. I go crazy when you're dominant because I fully embrace it and I don't feel guilty about it. Because mm. it drives me absolutely mentally... Cra- like, I lose myself. I literally just lose control. Mm. And when you lose control, when you give in to the things that you want, again, if they actually increase your self-esteem, let's say that, but if you give in to this, like, being submissive or having her dominate you, you just you lose yourself and you become like this rabid animal which by the way is like masculine as hell you -hmm. becoming animalistic is so incredibly masculine isn't it yeah it's like a wild animal like a wolf or something that's just gone ape shit crazy incredibly hot yeah but instead because you're feeling all this shame and this guilt you're not able to fully step into it you're not able to fully let go and and embrace it and embrace that animalistic masculine side of yourself Mm -hmm. and so yeah write this list of 20 things i would also say another trick you can do is you can say, what if I didn't, you know, we talked a bit before about manipulating. And again, please don't take this as us telling you that you're a manipulator. You're not, you're not. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm trying to get you to realize you're obviously a very fucking communicative, good human being. You're a good dude. The fact that you've written all this, that you care about her feelings, that you want her to like you, all of that, you're a good dude. I'm just trying to point out that like, sometimes we accidentally manipulate. We don't even know we're doing it, but we're trying to just control how someone else views us or thinks about us. Yeah, and sometimes, because at least for me, I think sometimes the word manipulation doesn't resonate, but definitely control. Control works, Control yeah. what they want and control how you, you have, you're very outcome dependent as to how you want them to feel and you're trying to control how they feel. Yeah, and as much as you possibly can, and this is why I think you'll like that book. Um, again, it's I Need Your Love, Is That True? by Byron Katie. She's like the ultimate stoic. She's the ultimate masculine woman. <laughs> She's, she, she's absolutely got like an abundance mentality or you talked a second ago about like outcome independence. You want to be independent of the outcome. You want to not care about the outcome. This woman's either going to like that I'm domi- like that I like when she dominates or she won't. And either way, that's fine. Like, mm-hmm. in fact, if she doesn't like dominating me, like she really doesn't like it and I ask her to do it a few times and she's just not into it, she will tell me. Mm-hmm. And isn't that great? She's speaking her truth or she'll leave. Isn't that great? She's speaking her truth. Cool. Now I'm freed up to go and find it with someone who really, really, really wants this. Because let's make this clear. Yes, some women won't want to be dominant with you. Hey, that's a fucking beautiful thing. You can either keep seeing them and you just be dominant all the time or go away and see someone else or see them and someone else. Again, do that ethically and honestly and tell them and all of that. But then you're freed up right now. And I don't know this. I'm sure this woman probably I'm assuming he's with one woman. He hasn't made it clear, has he? Mm Mm-mm. But I'm sure it sounds like some of the women have done it with him. It's like they go, you literally have proof that some women will like this. Imagine if you stepped fully into the role in the way that I do. One of the girls that, you know, the girl that we're seeing right now mm. who came on the podcast, mm-hmm. she's talked about like she would like to explore that side of herself. And I've hinted at her and said directly a couple of times, like, yeah, I want you to fucking like Emmy is going to teach you how to do that. Mm. And she seems like, yeah, I'd li- and she's the most like submissive, like. She's so incredibly sweet and like kind and just little. She's really small. Mm. She's like very, very adorable. She's like a little sweetie pie. Like she really is the last person you would ever think being dominant. But it's like she has that inside her and I think she'll be incredible at it. There's already been some hints that she's let out where it's like, oh, damn, like I think she's going to be really good at this. And And it's like you encourage that. I think it is the sort of thing that when most people like get into that energy and you kind of almost get into this flow of taking control. And you're kind of like bouncing back and forwards too if the man can step into it yeah it's pretty i would say most people once they kind of get into that space Mm -hmm. would probably enjoy it oh it's incredibly hot for both parties if you step into the space and embrace it fully Mm. if you dip your toe in the water and half ass it yes it's it's fun it's nowhere near this animalistic like lustful aggressive and i mean aggressive in the best possible way just incredible thing so back to the topic of manipulation what I would ask yourself, and this comes from that book, from that Byron Katie book, ask yourself, what if I didn't need anything from her? 
Like, what if I didn't even need her to think that I'm like masculine? What if I didn't even need her to think that I'm dominant? What if I didn't even need her to like me? What if I didn't even just, I just didn't care what she thought of me. I just, I didn't need anything from her. I wasn't trying to get something from her. I wasn't trying to get her approval or her respect. Mm. What would I do? And you'd go, well, okay, gee, with that thought experiment, I'd probably just do what you said, Andy. I'd probably just dominate her, pin her wrists above her head and, you know, just go crazy on her. And she's like, so into it. And then I'd lie down and go like, and grab her wrist and go like, your turn, like, you know, fuck the shit out of me, like go crazy on me. And then we'd, I'd just probably enjoy it. Yeah. Then do that. That's your answer. So that's a really helpful exercise. We talked about playing to win rather than playing not to lose. Yeah. Abundance mentality. There's more women out there. Play the numbers game, all that kind of stuff. It applies to women too, by the way, any women that are, how many women have we met that want some of this stuff, like want Rafa or domination and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they've been dating guys for months or years. And they bring up the topic of like, Oh, you know, we could try like some ropes or a blindfold. And the guy's just like, that's weird. Yeah. I don't want to do that. We've seen girls that have just gotten out of like long term things. And they come to us because they're like, I wanted this for the last four years mm. and I tried bringing it up multiple times and it was such an important part of me and I just, I never got to explore it. And now I get to explore it with you guys. So I'd mm. say the same for women, like embrace the things that you want. Mm. And it's up to you guys whether or not you stay in a relationship. Well, I'm not telling you to break up with people who aren't dominant but mm. i think you guys and girls get what i mean mm. but if you can step into that part of yourself and embrace it then if you do meet someone who doesn't tickle that itch or scratch that itch someone who isn't into the things that you're into you can go okay well that's okay there's like mm. plenty more fish in the sea there's a million other people out there i'll just find the ones that want this and that's what we mean when we say abundance mentality like realize that there are an abundance of people out there some of whom will click with you sexually and some of whom won't and that's cool yeah ultimately you want to be spending your time with somebody that like you are compatible with sexually because mm-hmm. it's a pretty i think it's a bit of a not a waste but it's maybe not the best use of both of your times if you're committing to somebody that you're not compatible with at least sexually yeah for sure yeah especially if you're like further what he says here we haven't because we haven't read everything he's written but he goes like you know you know i'm kind of a switch and if you guys don't know what a switch is i'm sure you can guess from the word i just mean sometimes you like to be dominant sometimes Mm -hmm. you like to be submissive i'm a switch i think probably 95% of the time I'm dominant, maybe 90, 95. Mm. And then I like to be submissive sometimes. It's just that I'm too horny and that's why I'm dominant usually. And then you just want to (laughs) fuck. Yeah, even sometimes like when you dominate me, I'll just lose control so much that I'll I'll then just go like, I can't even do this and I'll just flip you over and just start, like I'll just start dominating because it's like I can't control myself. And so there you go. That's another one for your list of why being submissive can be hot and masculine. Because sometimes you get so turned on and so crazy that just something snaps in your brain and you go, no, fuck this, I'm in charge. And you just go mental. How hot is that when I do that? Yeah, no, it's super hot. It's like I've literally said, fuck this little game. You know what I mean? Like I've let you, the cute little girl, be on top for a while. I've let you dominate. But now like daddy's taking over. Now we're actually showing you like the man's here. It's time to do some man shit. Yeah, because a lot of the domination that I do, it is psychological rather it's than like I, I can't physically dominate you yeah correct and yeah. what i would need to do to physically dominate with you would actually you'd hurt like, you yeah you'd have to like so i could do bjj but it would hurt you and i don't want to actually physically hurt well, you'd have you. to like tie me up to the point and even <laughs> then i'd probably still break the rope it would it would dig into my wrist yeah you'd have sure, to, you'd have to hurt fun. me to dominate me physically and yeah. so part of it is that it's you're, you're letting me dominate you yeah it's a psychological thing yeah. and that's that's another thing here you go so another reason why being submissive can be dominant or can be masculine is because you're letting her mm. and at any point you can take that away it's like consent that you're giving but you're like it's it's like a fun little game that you're playing it is literally a psychological fun little game you're playing mm. you're like all right little girl you get to pretend that you're in charge and she's mm. like yeah i'm in charge and then at any point you can just remind her who's boss and i do that with you a lot yeah like you will tease me sometimes like really 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 teasing you and i will let you tease me for like five minutes and then i will just grab you and just take the thing that i want and almost like i'm redirecting you like if you're teasing my mm-hmm. dick i will just make you grab my dick or something or i'll grab your head and like shove it on my dick this is definitely not getting monetized this video <laughs> no, it is this not. is probably getting marked as 18 plus as well Maybe. um but yeah i will like force you to do something and then you'll start doing it and i'll be like yeah good girl and then i'll go back to like being submissive i'll be like there you go okay now i'll keep playing the game so like that's masculine mm. 
Like there's there's ways of doing this stuff that isn't just, and by the way, even if you want to fully embrace submissive and not be masculine at all, go for that too. As long as it increases your self-esteem, you're really happy with it. It's good for the girls and it increases their self-esteem, then great. The one thing I wouldn't necessarily recommend, like I said, is degrading sex, hmm. where you call each other names, but you actually mean it. Like it lowers your self-esteem. If you're going to use degrading terms and talk dirty to each other, make sure that it's a fun thing that afterwards you feel good that you did that. Mm. During In the moment, sure, it can be degrading as hell. And then afterwards you're like, yeah, I really liked enjoying that side of myself. That's good. Like, mm. sure, that's fine. Even then, I don't think we use degrading words much anymore. Not I don't think we're capable the of it. The extent we go to is like, whore. Even then, it just feels like a fun, cute little word that we're playing. It, yeah, it doesn't feel like... There's we no all have a smile on our faces when we do it. Yeah, it's teasing. It's not like... It's really not... It doesn't come from a degrading yeah. energy. I don't think I can degrade anymore. I think you and I lost that ability a while ago mm. when we fully stepped into more, like, higher frequencies, if you want a hippie way of saying it. The higher energy levels, the higher emotional... You know, I'm, I'm talking about this thing, this thing here. Mm. Like, we, we, once we went up to some of the higher emotions up here, it became a lot harder to use degrading words. Okay, you got to finish up in a second. Cool. Okay, we'll go. So... Yeah, he's kind of a switch. So another thing you can do really quickly is in the lead up to seeing this girl, if this is if this is a girl that you're already sleeping with, someone you're already sleeping with, send some dirty text messages in the lead up. Mm. Like, you know, next time we meet up, I want you to tie me up and fuck me. And she's like, oh, you want that, do you? And you're like, yeah, you bitch. Like, yeah, that's you know, tie me up, do like, this to me. Like, get her excited to yeah. make her, like, encourage her to want to do it. Get her really, really, really horny and talk mm. about what you're going to do. I obviously have a podcast on how to dominate women. I can leave a link in the... Dis sorry, how to find dominant women. Mm. I can leave a link in the description to that. You can also su uh, teach submissive women, like we said. Yeah, there's nothing else that he said in here that I think we need to address. But yeah, I, I feel like there's enough there. So I would tell yourself you love yourself every day in the mirror. Write a list of 50 things about yourself that are likable and masculine already so you can prove to yourself, hey, I'm already masculine. I don't need to prove it to anyone. Why am I trying to prove it to her? Mm. Prove it to yourself. Mm. The only reason you're trying to prove it to her is because you don't believe it in yourself. Mm. So prove that to yourself. Write a list of 20 reasons why being submissive is not masculine and then turn each one of those around and find a way to have a win. And then write a list of 20 reasons why being submissive can be masculine or is masculine mm. and embrace those things and do it in a masculine way. And just grab her wrists and fucking pin yourself down and, you know, get pegged and have her fucking say, you like that big boy? You like my fucking... Just go crazy, you know what I mean? Like, have fun with this shit. Again, if it's increasing your self-esteem. So, yeah. anything else you want to add? Mm -mm. It's fun. Go try things. Yeah, it is. It's good fun. And we're going to do a lot more, or I'm going to do a lot more content on, like, embracing this side of yourselves if this is something you guys want. By the way, if anyone is listening and they go, like... Well, I just want to be dominant all the time. I'd never do this, like, weak, fucking, submissive, beta male shit. It's like, cool, great. I'm glad that you found something that's awesome for you. Great. Like, I'm a big libertarian. I want you guys to do what you want to do. As always, go crush your goals. I have coaching. Links in the description below. Go crush the goals.